Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is the first video in a three-part series about the Central Limit Theorem. As usual, there's a link down below in the description to a PDF version of these slides. The first video in this series is going to be talking about uh, examples, real-life examples of using the Central Limit Theorem, and then it will define the Central Limit Theorem. The second example was to show some results given distributions that we know about already, like the binomial distribution. And then the third video in the series is going to talk about a realistic example uh, from astronomy where you might be interested in using central limit theorem ideas. All right, so before we get into the examples and the formal definition, I want to give the main idea that I will reiterate again later. So the main idea is that sums and averages of IID, that is independent and identically distributed random variables from any distribution, have approximate normal distributions for sufficiently large sample sizes. So that's the main idea. So we're talking about sums and averages, we're talking about IID random variables, and we're talking about large sample sizes. And when you have that scenario, then these sums and averages have approximate normal distributions. All right, so here is what's commonly referred to as the bell-shaped curve. So the bell-shaped curve is really the probability density function for a normal random variable. And we're gonna look at a series of examples in a second where we have histograms of real data that look approximately like this bell-shaped curve. And so what are the features of this bell-shaped curve that are important? One feature is that there's only one peak or one mode. We might say it's unimodal. The second piece is that the distribution is symmetric around that mode. You'll see that if you were to slice it in half, you'll see that on the left side, it looks just like it does on the right side. And the third key aspect is that the uh, tails of the distribution, the ends of the distribution, both to the left and to the right, uh, they don't extend too far. That is, they die off relatively quickly. And what that will mean for data is that we don't see data that are too crazy away from this mean, or from this mode, let's say. All right, so this is the bell-shaped curve. This is the idealized representation. But what will it look like when we actually get data? So we can simulate data to see what it would look like. So here's an example of four different examples. If we had a thousand data points that were actually from a normal distribution, what those histograms might look like, right? And so you can see that they're not perfectly the bell-shaped curve, but generally you can see that they have a single mode. That is, if you were to sort of smooth out this histogram in your mind, right, there's really only one peak, that the distribution is symmetric, that it looks approximately the same on the left and on the right, and that there's not too many points that are really far away from that mean. Right, we can see in that first upper left facet that there's a data point that's a little bit far left and same with the second, but generally there's not too many and they're not too far away. Okay, and again, this is from data that we simulated that we know come from that normal distribution. So these are as good as it gets for real world histograms. Okay, so let's look at a couple of real examples. So the first example is looking at a histogram of yield for a particular crop. Right? This histogram of yield, it looks very similar to those examples on the previous slide where we simulated the data. So this yield, it's unimodal, right? There's only one peak. It looks about the same on the left and on the right. And there's not too many points that are too far in the tails of the distribution to the left and to the right. Okay? Here's another example. SAT scores. These happen to be SAT scores from North Carolina. All right, so what do we see here? Well, we see generally that there's one mode. We see that it's uh, approximately symmetric from left to right, and that there's not too many observations that are extending out far away from the mode of this distribution. But, right, it doesn't quite look as symmetric as the previous picture, and we see sort of more big points to the uh, right than we do to the left. Okay, so not quite as normal, perhaps. But there's also a situation where, compared to the previous example, we probably have fewer data points in here. And when we have fewer data points, histograms will be, look less and less like that bell-shaped curve. So here's an example where we simulated data, but now we only have 20 observations in each simulation. Now again, these observations are truly from a normal distribution. So this is as good as it gets, for that bell-shaped curve, 
when you only have 20 observations. Right? And you can see, all right, it's getting a lot harder to tell that it's unimodal, that it's symmetric, and that it doesn't have too big of tails. That is, the observations are not too far from that mean. Okay? But again, this is as good as it gets. So here's a third example where we have fewer data points. This happens to come from an example that I googled when I think I googled strength histograms. And it, this one actually has two different histograms in it. So you have to think about the red and the blue separately. So the red curve, uh, red histogram I should say, has a histogram that looks kind of like the histograms we had in the previous slide. And the blue histogram is kind of like what we had in the previous slide. The authors of this paper definitely wanted to make the case that these look approximately normal because they've superimposed those normal probability density function curves right on top of the histograms. We have the red curve for the red histogram and the blue curve for the blue histogram. And certainly having those curves there makes you think more that it might be from a normal distribution. Okay. So let's talk about what the central limit theorem actually says. As a reminder, the central limit theorem is talking about sums and averages of IID random variables. So let's talk about those for a moment. IID, as a reminder, stands for independent and identically distributed. Hopefully I'll put a link up here or a card up here to a video specifically talking about that idea of independence and identically distributed. But basically, very succinctly, what it means to be identically distributed is that every individual random variable has exactly the same distribution. Okay? And to be independent, what it means is that knowing some set of those random variables tells you nothing about the remaining set. Right? Because these random variables are identically distributed, then they have the same mean and they have the same variance. So we have the expectation for xi for all i is equal to mu, and we have the variance for xi for all i equal to sigma squared. So the expectation for all these random variables is mu, and the variance for all these random variables is sigma squared. All right, so now let's talk about sums and averages. First, let's have some notation. We're going to call Sn the sum of the first n of these random variables, and we'll call Xn bar the average of the first n of these random variables. Once we have the sum, it's very easy to calculate the average. We just take the sum and divide by n, and that's our average. And now, Back on the slide talking about independent, identically distributed random variables, we also talked about properties of expectations and properties of variances. So if you use those two, uh, well, not two properties, but the set of properties that are associated with expectations and variances for independent random variables, you can find the expectation and the variance for the sum and for the average. So the expectation for the sum is just n times the expectation for one of the individual random variables. The variance of the sum is just n times the variance of an individual random variable. We can also find the standard deviation for this sum, which we find by taking the positive square root of the variance, and the standard deviation for the sum is therefore the square root of n times sigma. Now we can go through the process of finding the expectation of variance for the average. So the expectation of the average is just mu, that is exactly the same as the average of one of them. The variance for the average is sigma squared divided by n. Okay, you should convince yourself that's true using those properties of variances. If we take the square root of this variance, we find the standard deviation for this average, and the standard deviation is sigma divided by the square root of n. All right, so now that we've set the stage about sums and averages of IID random variables, and we know their expectation, and we know their variance, we can talk about what the central limit theorem says. And the central limit theorem really only adds one more piece of information. And that one more piece of information is what the distribution is. Okay. So here I'm going to give the formal definition of the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says if we take a sample average, we subtract its mean, we divide by its standard deviation, and we take the limit of that ratio as the number of observations or number of these random variables goes to infinity, then what we find is that this converges to a standard normal distribution. We can do the same thing for sums. We can take a sum, we can subtract off its expectation, divide by its standard deviation, take the limit as the number of random variables goes to infinity, and that converges to a standard normal distribution. So remember, 
Just to recap, the main idea here is that sums and averages of iid random variables from any distribution have approximate normal distributions, see those two standard normals, for sufficiently large sample sizes. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here. The next video is going to pick up where we start talking about the practical uses of this central limit theorem. Hope to see you there.